Hello, what's up everyone? This is the first take. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kai and today we'll be going to how to get started at Leakwood as a beginner. So this is my background. Um, my name is Kai. I'm a senior at Penn studying finance and computer science. I'm an aspiring adventure photographer. Um, I'm also a competitive chess player. I've stopped playing competitive chess but do play online now. I'm rated 2260 below on leechess.org. And my favorite languages are Python and Java when it comes to leak code. In the bottom right here, this is my um, LinkedIn profile just to give you more legitimacy, legitimacy to who I am. This is my leak code profile. Um, I've solved 1,029 problems, uh, most of it being easy and medium, uh, as well as only a few hard problems. I need to solve a bit more hard, but I'm just doing this for leisure. Um, I'm currently ranked sub 16,000 on the leak code website so i'm pretty proud of that and i love to solve leak code so here's the video roadmap um we'll be going through basically the ways of how to get started in, on leak code and how to be consistent in it so we'll be going through uh, defining your goals um what coding language you should choose coding bat which is a platform that i used to use to get into leak code um and then focusing on which leak code topics to start off with after that, we'll go into like the progression method, as well as the optimal problem split when it comes to solving problems for different types of goals. Um, after that, we'll be going to my tips for being consistent, as well as when should you or if you should use aid while solving these problems. After that, we'll be going to external resources that are good for supplementary learning. And 10 would be my final thoughts and why you should make leak code a fun enjoyable process to do so now we should define your goals um there are i guess three other things that you should really think about one being your time frame are you do you need to study leak code within three months do you have six months or do you have one year um ultimately if you do have a shorter time frame you should be pacing yourself at a higher rate of problems and often go for more medium and hard problems when you're going for a shorter time frame just because you're in that pressure if you do have a lot more time then i think you can honestly do whatever type of problem that, that you want and just learn as much as you can and without the pressure of like being forced to study for a certain interview and then we should also think about the a lot of time you have each day for solving problems uh i generally would say you want a lot between 15 to 30 minutes for each leak code problem sometimes these problems will take you one minute to solve um, and sometimes they take an hour to solve. But I would say on average, you should spend 15 to 30 minutes per problem. So if you have, let's say two hours a day, then that could be like, let's say four to six problems solved each day. And then in addition, you want to think about your aspirations. Like, are you doing this for leisure? Are you doing it for fun? Are you doing it because you want to learn data structures and algorithms and you think that lead code will be a good supplement to your coursework? Or are you looking to get into competitive programming? Um, do you also get, do you also want to get into a big tech job like at Google or Amazon or Netflix, or do you want to pursue, I guess, a career in the quant industry, like two Sigma, Optiver, um, Jane street, places like that. So when you think about these goals, your leak code study guide or your leak code study plan will have to change in accordance to these goals. So these are things to really think about. So the time frame. If you have a shorter time frame, I would recommend following a study plan such as Nikode 150, Top Interview 150, or Leakode 75. If you have a longer time frame, then you don't need to have a study plan or to really follow one. I'd say just solve as many problems as you can. Uh, now that we have like the time allotted to each problem, um, I think for easy problems, you start off by taking like let's say 15 minutes to solve each one, and at some point when you do a lot of problems, you can solve easy problems within a minute. Um, as for medium, I'd say they would take around 30 minutes at the start, or maybe like impossible, to uh, in the fastest, I guess, times when I would solve problems, it would be five minutes long. As for hard problems, I still struggle with this, so I'm not sure how much time you should allot to a hard problem. Um, but yeah, hard problems are really, really difficult. And I would say spend as much as you spend as much time as you can on each problem and really try to understand the material don't feel rushed or, or inadequate or try to compare yourself to like a certain 
oh, I'm not meeting this certain time frame or I'm very slow compared to my peers. Ultimately, like you are learning a lot no matter how fast or slow you are. And when I first started, I spent so much time on simple, easy problems like two sum. So I felt very stupid when I first started off. And then now that we are thinking about our aspirations, I say if you're if you're doing lead code for leisure, just do whatever makes you feel happy. I did lead code for leisure, um, and that ended up with me solving a lot of easy problems and less hard problems. But that's okay. If you are learning DSA, I'd say you should really focus on those specific problem topics in conjunction with your coursework and whatever you're, you're learning at the moment. And these work very well hand in hand. If you're focused on competitive programming, let's say you're in high school or middle school and you want to get into this, um, I'd say you should really focus on C++ as well as other websites such as Code Forces and Advent of Code. Um, these are very good, I think, training platforms for competitive programming. I don't have much experience in these, but this is what I've heard from my competitive programming friends. Um, if you're striving for big tech, I'd say you should do a lot of company-specific questions uh, solve them in Python 3 and try to learn as much as you can about DSA. If you're doing quant, learn C++. Um, if you're doing, let's say, software engineering for a financial firm or like a smaller bank or for a bulge bracket bank, you should learn Java. Now, it's time to think about like what coding language should I use? So Python 3 is generally a very beginner-friendly language um, and they're common for big tech interviews as well as the online assessments. So if you want to do well on those, I'd say study Python 3. It's It rewards you with the most bang for your buck when it comes to recruiting for jobs. You should learn Java for bulge bracket sort of firms. And then C++ if you want to get into competitive programming, uh, the quant industry or high frequency trading. Um, C++ is a very, I guess, more detailed language there's a lot more nuance to it and you have to really specify like which data structure and which types of things you're using so it's a lot more specific but it's a lot faster and i think that when it comes to building up your general knowledge of the of computer science theory c plus plus is a very good way of reinforcing these principles while python 3 would skip over a lot of the underlying um like engineering and structure of computer science. And a good thing to know is that 75% of competitive programmers code in C++. So just like really think about that and it might be good to make the switch to C++ later on in the future or you can start with C++ right now. Um, but I think Python 3 is always a good language to like get started in. So now we'd be getting into coding bat. So before getting into lead code, I really recommend making an account on codingbat.com um, and solving basically all the Java problems and all the Python problems. Codingbat problems are generally a lot easier than leak code and they will ease you into the problem solving process of like typing up the answer, compiling your code, running that against the test cases, and then seeing if you get it all correct or not. So I'll minimize my window here, but if you go on Codingbat on the website, you can make an account here at the top and then just basically solve these problems. And these problems are super easy to begin with. So if you just like, let's say we, we refresh the page here, they give you like this little question and then they give you some example test cases and then you have to basically type up your code, right? You then press go, you compile it and it runs you, it runs your code against all the test cases and it returns if it was correct or not, right? And this is basically the general like process of how LeetCode works as well. But this is a lot more simplified and a lot easier to understand. So if you are just wanting to get into LeetCode but it seems very daunting at first, CodingBat is the best website to dip your toes into sort of the LeetCode style of solving problems. Yeah. And then after you solved all the Java and Python uh, CodingBat problems, I'd say you should focus on these LeetCode topics. Um, and so in order of least difficult to the greatest difficulty, I'd say you should focus on array and string first, and then binary search two pointers sliding window. Third, we want to do binary tree linked list recursion. Fourth would be breadth first search, depth first search, priority queue, and greedy algorithms. So this is more like graph theory and graph traversal. After that, we want to go into dynamic programming, mem memoization, and backtracking. So this is like very much 
um, sort of like space efficient uh, approaches to solving larger problems. And then now it's time to talk about the progression. So I'd say with um, thinking about the previous slide and how you want to like focus on those topics from least to greatest difficulty, you want to start choosing a singular topic on LeetCode. So if we go on LeetCode.com right now, there are many topics that you can work from, right? So if we go onto algorithms and we go to, let's say, the tags here, we can go into like array. And what I like to do is when I got when I first got started, I would sort by like which problems I want to solve. So if we go back here actually and we go to highest acceptance rate and we only select for easy difficulty, you can see that I've basically solved every single problem here. Literally every single one that's like available to me, right? And my strategy when I first started off and what I recommend is pretty much sorting each topic by the highest acceptance rate, solve the first 50 easy problems, repeat for the other topics, and then select for the medium problems, solve the 50 highest acceptance medium, medium problems, and then just repeat. And just consistently do that. And basically, ease your way into harder and harder problems and really focus on the quantity solved because this is basically how you get your reps in and if you get like three reps in every single day it would just become a lot easier like later down the line when it comes to solving these problems for either for an, an interview or maybe you're in class and, you, and there's like a new type of like i don't know graph problem stuff like that when you focus on the quantity you will do really well later on in the future right and now it's time to think about the optimal problem split. So my problem split right now is honestly like 45% easy, 45% medium, 10% hard. So it's not, so it's very imbalanced. But I would say the optimal problem split would be to go for 60% medium, 20% hard, 20% easy. And this is just to, I guess, save you on time and to really try to lock in on like the core principles when it comes to I guess preparing for job interviews. Um, of course, like you shouldn't adhere to this strictly. I'd say still solve as many problems as you can, whether or not if it's easy or medium or hard. Um, and definitely try to participate in the weekly LeetCode contest just to get a gauge of how you compare to, let's say, other coders of similar abilities. You know, just to provide some more comp competitive spirit in your LeetCode grind. So here are my tips for being consistent at LeetCode. Um, you want to find friends who are of your similar skill level and similar, let's say, age or, you know, I guess time or like just just find similar people who also aspire to get good at LeetCode um, and find accountability partners and make group chats. Second, I would say create a LeetCode leaderboard doc where you record your name, your LeetCode URL, the amount of problems that you've solved easy medium hard and as well as like maybe like any notes that you have on like staying consistent in your goals and always hold your friends accountable for what they're doing and they'll hold you accountable and when you solve problems as a group or in tandem it makes the process a lot more fun and easy and i highly recommend it because like solving things alone is just so so difficult to have the motivation to do so and when you have a friend to do it with you it makes it a lot more better um, and here are my thoughts on using aid while solving problems. If you ever want to use any type of aid, I recommend using neat code videos to either watch the introduction or to, I guess, learn the entire problem solution. Um, second, I'd say you could also use ChatGPT, and you can just basically copy and paste your code after you've tried it a few times and just say like, hey, can you give me a hint on how to solve this? What am I missing? How do I make this more space efficient? And it can like guess it can give you like some pseudocode hints and try not to rely on, try not to rely on it too much, but it's a really good resource. Um, in addition, I'd say you, c you should use algo.monster. It's like a website and definitely take note of the problem approach and intuition sections. So these are very very helpful, and I love to like record these little sections in my notebook or on my iPad just to keep track of like how to solve these problems. So I'll show you what they look like. So I have an example problem here for a 444. 
um, there's, here's the problem description. You can just read over it. It's just the question itself. And then when you read the intuition, as well as the problem approach later down the line, these are very cool to learn. And you basically get a, let's say like a top-down overview of like how someone would approach this problem and like what strategies that they're thinking about immediately. Especially the intuition part. It's very cool to learn. And I'd say write this down. Try to understand the problem approach and you will later on, you know, get that intuition and to solve your other problems by yourself. In the end though, you don't want to be too reliant on aid. Ultimately, this is for you to learn and not for you to solve it a shitload amount of problems. You want to learn as much as you can. Here are some external resources. Here are some external resources that I recommend. Um, one would be the competitive programming handbook. So if you're I guess learning C++, um, you can just search up competitive programming handbook online and this is what you get. I've briefly read through this like the first five chapters um, and not the entire book because it's kind of dense but it's very good to learn and even if you're doing Python 3 or other languages, um, reading the C++ handbook is always going to be beneficial to you because it teaches you a lot of the pseudocode and like the intuition as well when it comes to solving these problems, right? So that's really helpful. In addition, you can find like a data structures and algorithms textbook online and just find the PDF. Um, I normally consult with my schools like UPenn, um, SIS 1210, uh, DSA PDF textbook, but I'm sure you can find other online lecture notes and look at it from there. Um, third, I would say watch videos by Indian people on YouTube. They're the most helpful people of all time. Especially this guy, Abdul Bari. He is so, so helpful. His videos literally taught me every single sort algorithm. And honestly, like, very, very helpful resource. I highly recommend his videos. So this is my last point, my final thoughts on everything. You want to make leak code as fun as possible. And don't be like a CS major doomer or be this guy that has to be like, oh, I gotta solve all these lead code problems and like, I gotta grind day and night, like, come on. Don't beat yourself over like solving as much as you can or for not knowing how to solve a problem. You know, try to really enjoy the process and enjoy that you're learning something new. Now, learning is always good for your brain no matter what. Like, even if you don't get that computer science job or you don't get that software engineering job, at least you tried at something and it helps you like honestly like it helps you with problem solving and how to think that's what i really got from this experience it really teaches you how to think logically and how to break down large problems into sizable chunks where you where you can like focus on each individual chunk and develop a little strategy for each one right and the final point would be you only live once so make sure that you know you're balancing leak code with spending time with your friends and family and try to be a good person um, to other people in your classes, online, and try not to become toxic. I feel that a lot of computer science people get very up in their heads about like, I have this internship and I'm making $120 an hour and I am this elite quant coder. Or um, actually, no, a, a lot of people are nice, but there are, you, you will meet some people who are very sweaty about this and like really tie in their whole identity to having a job or to having this particular internship really try to balance your sources of value or like your own personal value across different things and don't be overly reliant on leak code or software engineering as like this is who i am or this is my personality so um yeah so that's all thank you so much for watching the video uh if you do like this video please like comment and subscribe and definitely let me know if you have any questions um yeah, just really appreciate you guys for watching this video. All right, I'm going to end the video now. Thank you.